you have to build some type of financial empire and she has to be some what a part of your system in order for it to work mm. but what happens is people come together based on we're nice to each other we're having a good conversation and we're attracted to each other that's it until they get to the point of okay where are we going and where do you want to go in life and where do i want to go in life and usually it's and that's what separates the couples every time it's that <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Man, let's get into it. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J. Hill in the building. J. Hill Podcast. Super special guest. I mean, this guy has been on all the different platforms. Remember, I was doing a podcast, and I was like, I got to stop saying I ain't making because I'm interviewing everybody that's interviewing with the big names. He one of them. You get what I'm saying? He been on all your favorite podcasts. He be getting a lot of money, giving you niggas game. I mean, shit. Watching this interview, you probably can make a couple of dollars. It's being real. You feel me? I'm going to give you all the game. He going to give you all the game because I don't really know it. Shout out to my guy, Aristotle Investments, right? What's good? What's good? Aristotle Investments. Yes, sir. Yes, that. sir. Hey, I ain't yeah. wanted to say Aristotle because yeah. he's probably like a lot of people out there named Aristotle. I feel like somebody. For real? I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if my I'm nickname. I'm the only one I know. You know somebody named Aristotle? No, but I just wouldn't be surprised if that's my, like, that's your real name. Yeah. So, like, I just wouldn't be because, like, it was in a Bible, right? Like, it's like, you know, nah, like it was he, like he a was, false, he, like a. Yeah, he was a Greek philosopher. Yeah, um, that's what I'm he, saying. It's like, like, aristocracy, kind of right. how it yeah. works. A democracy See, is. I learned that shit in, of, like, in yeah. like high school, I think. Exactly. We watched that shit. Yeah, yeah, so I just wouldn't be surprised if somebody else's name was, I don't know, some made up yeah, shit. That's, <laughs> like, that's actually my middle name, though. Right, no, I know. Yeah. You, like, you gotta, like, your first, say, say your whole name again. I feel like you said it like 20 times before. I ain't never said my first name. My first you name did. is uh, Macarios. You said it, man. Aristotle Varner Jr. That's yeah. my full name. You said that shit like five times, bro. You don't, you don't remember? I probably did, but I didn't think he was watching like that. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you said I ain't never said my whole name before. You said that shit like yeah. five times. Yeah. Now, I know a little something about you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you from around here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You was in the military. You uh, you started doing the stock shit at what? Nineteen? Nah, cool. I was uh twenty years old when 20. I first like dabbled into it. But um, twenty one when I took it serious. You went crazy. Mm. What you like twenty five, twenty six now? Six, yeah. Damn, man. How how was everything going though, bro? I know like. Man, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes <laughs> it was recently where I was like, damn, like like I would say business, everything been going. Very, very good. Mm. Like to in 2022 wasn't a good year for business for a lot of people. You gotta think, billionaires. Elon Musk lost 100 bees. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg lost billions. Like I didn't make significantly more than I made last year, but at least I made more than I made last year. Mm. So I'm positive right. this year. You in the green? Exactly, and that's what matters to me. Like as a, as a CEO is making more than I made last year. Now, granted, it wasn't a, a huge amount. It was like maybe, you know, a meal or two over what I made last year. But usually I'm doubling every year. I'm so used to that. And this mm -hmm. year I didn't double what I made last year. So, but, you know, every business has a plateau point. Look at God. Nigga said it was like a million or two over than last year. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, but I'm, when you used to flipping your money, like I remember in, in 2017 – I made like a hundred racks. Twenty eighteen, mm -hmm. five hundred racks. Twenty nineteen, none of my phone fault. Twenty eighteen, a hundred racks. Twenty nineteen, five hundred racks. Twenty twenty, I made a meal, mm -hmm. right? So I kept. I'm so used to doubling, and then after that, I made. You know, it went crazy. How do you know? Um, or not? How do you know? Because you know, how some people their business will make a million dollars, mm -hmm. but they're not like worth a million dollars. Right. At what point in time were you up a million dollars? So I'm talking about like million dollars cash. Mm. Uh, I would say January 
2020. So literally months before the pandemic. And that's what sucks because as soon as the pandemic hit, I was a millionaire and I was dreaming about all these things I'm about to do when I get out of the army. Like I've been waiting on this moment for literally six years. Mm. Like I got out, uh, my contract was literally to get out May 2020, but I got out two months early because I saved up all my leave. Mm. And you can use your leave days and add it to your ETS date, which is your last day. So that's how I got out in March 2020. 2020. But like, yeah, man, like that was that was terrible. Like when the pandemic hit, the moment I became a millionaire. But when I say things hindsight, it saved me because I probably would have splurged so much money. It forced me to save my first meal. Mm. Cause I would I ain't gonna lie, I would have been out of the country. I would have been doing some some fly shit. I know that niggas, saved me. niggas with money say like a million dollars ain't shit, right? That's what it, it ain't. That's a nigga with a million dollars can say that easily. You feel For me? Sure. Nigga ain't never seen that before. I ain't trying to hit half of that shit. Yeah. So I just feel like when you say I would have blown through a million outside of buying houses and cars, because I feel mm. like that that could make it easy. Right. I can you really blow like traveling, like you really oh, a million dollars is very like like little when you sit back and think about it. Like I wouldn't have blown it because I'm actually think about it. If I if I save up to that point, I weren't gonna do that anyway. Right. But it forced me to literally stay home and, and figure out how to scale it. And I turned that million into 10 million in two years. Mm. Before we start talking millions, right? Do you think saving money, cause I got a friend that was in the military and he's always talking about like, you know, uh, paying off his debts and t- debts and stuff like that. Right. And he did that. But do you think being in the military make it a little easier? Cause I feel like everybody's not going, like everybody is not in the military and have, cause military pay for some things, right? So, I was getting paid $900 every two weeks mm. for the first four and a half years of my military career. So I can't really say it was easy. Mm. It's only easy if you get married. Okay. Because that's when you start making 4K a month. You go from making 1800 to 4K a month. That's why, niggas, that's why so many people in the military get married. That's why. Okay. But, like, I was rock. I've been trying to, you know, me and her have been talking since we was uh, 18, 19. Mm-hmm. So. It weren't no shit. Like I knew this girl for like three years. Your wife, people. That yeah, my wife. So, like, it was easier on the income side when that happened, cause I went from making, cause I was making like eighteen hundred from the army, and I was making three k a month cutting hair. Mm. So I was making more cutting hair than I made in the military. Mm. And then that was the first four years of my army career. And then um. I would say when I got married, it added an extra 3K. And now, and then I was trading too. So then that was like another 5K a month. So out of nowhere, I'm making 12K a month organically mm-hmm. just off me. You get what I'm saying? So that turned me up fast. Like that's what turned me up when I was making like 12,000 a month, like just out of nowhere. And it happened like three months after we got married. Mm-hmm. So I got married. And then once that check started rolling in, I started just putting 100% of that. Every Even the money I was already making off barbering, you know what I'm saying? So half of my military income went to living expenses and then the other like like my barber money and the and the other half of that check went to um the stock market and other stuff like ads, Facebook ads, stuff like that. So you said half of the other money or all of it? Well, all of it. Damn, you just putting in all like how Nip said all money in. Damn. All money went into the stock market. Or ads, so it wasn't like I was broke. I was investing everything I had. I put it all on the line every single month. At what point was the breakthrough though? Because I know you, you, you. you at some point, you went to the military because you couldn't go to school. Or you couldn't afford school, right? And um, you fell upon the uh, the stocks and stuff. Mm-hmm. At what point was the breakthrough? Like I gotta go all in. At what moment did you realize I had to go all in every month? I've been feeling that way, but. What made me get up and do it was when my wife got pregnant with my son. Mm. So it's like I'm I'm powering up this entire time. Like I'm already saving my money. I already got ten thousand on me. Like I'm not broke, but to me that's broke. Mm. Even when I had when I made my first ten thousand, I was not satisfied because I was like I'm ten percent away from a hundred k. But like I tell people, I saw this chart. It was on Acorn. The breakthrough moment was really this. When this when this chart said you can retire by sixty five with a million dollars if you invest one hundred dollars every week, right? 
So I said, you telling me. So I'm like, but what if I put in 200? Mm. Then can I, <clears throat> can I beat that time? So basically I figured out like, okay, cool. If it's going to take me $100 a week until I'm 65 years old to retire with a million, all I got to do is figure out how the hell can I keep putting in more than 100? Mm. And maybe I can get there by the time I'm 30 something. So I just kept trying to beat the time of my retirement. And that's how, I, that's how I got rich fast because I worked every single day to beat that time. So that's why I say I was all money in because I'm thinking like, hold on, if they send one, if they send $100, fuck it, I'm putting in three stacks. Maybe I can get there by the time I'm 28. Facts. Cause that's what it said. I'm I'm uh 21. It says shit. If you if you put in 3k at this percent and you stay profitable doing this, you could probably get there in your mid 30s. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try to get there by 28. So now I'm putting in 10,000. I'm I'm hustling to literally invest so I can retire fast and get to an M fast. Mm. I just feel like like that's definitely dope. It's just I think being in Atlanta. One thing I will say is like you know when you're around certain things, you're around people with money, you can see as is is. I wasn't better. in Atlanta. Right now I'm saying like usually like I'm saying it to say, I'm around it so I can definitely see how how possible it is, right? Mm -hmm. But like I'm just, if they would have to say fresh out the boat of like being a broke nigga for real, you know what I'm saying? So right. I can still understand what niggas thinking, because I feel like it's easy to do that, and I think you had this conversation on big facts. Like it's easy to do that when uh, when you got when your bills are paid. Right, but for the nigga who's struggling to pay that bills, you can't tell this nigga to, to invest a hundred percent into. You well, know what I'm oh, that's the first part. See, before I even went in saving that money, I literally had a breakthrough moment too. Um, I was that same nigga. Mm -hmm. I was just like every other nigga. Jordans every month. I stay. I don't even know what releases now. Mm -hmm. I haven't known what release for Jordans in the last three years. Before that, I could tell you every release, and I'm buying it. And I'm and I'm waiting in line to buy it. I don't do that no more. Mm -hmm. I stopped buying Jordans, cold turkey. I stopped playing video games, mm -hmm. cold turkey. Um, I cut off cable, cold turkey. Um, I stopped even eating out. I even stopped going to the club with my homies. I stopped every single thing you could think of that added extra expenses to my life. Mm -hmm. Cause I was only getting paid nine hundred dollars every two weeks. So I'm sitting here like, how the fuck I'm gonna get rich if I'm only left with two hundred dollars, a hundred dollars? Sometimes I gotta wait to the last. Like I'm, I got fifty dollars left until I'm like, I'm like, where the fuck is this eighteen hundred going? Mm. So I, so I, I broke down my living expenses. I said I have to live as cheap as possible. So this is how cheap I live. I only ate the army food, so it might be hard, like you said, for another dude. Cause at least you know they gave me, even though I was getting paid nine hundred dollars every two weeks, I had free food to go eat, mm. but I had to be there. You know what I'm saying? So now it's teaching me discipline. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, I got to be there on time because I need to save every single dime. Haircut money. I'm I'm there. No questions asked. I weren't even fucking with no girls. That I, I cut off girls, too. I was like, look, I got to go get some money mm. type shit. And then uh, that's how I saved my first 10K, by just me cutting off everything and everybody and saying, fuck the world. I got to take care of my future. I got Once I saw that chart showing me how I can, I, I can retire early, and seeing how much it'll take for me to retire to get to an M. So I'm racing to an M. So that's why when I made my first 10K, I didn't care about it because that wasn't the goal. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like I started learning like to shoot for the stars and then land on the moon. So work towards an M, you'll get to 100K fast. Mm -hmm. But if you get to 100K, you gonna, if you if you saying all I want is 100K, you're going to make small moves. So I was making, I was thinking way too big. Mm -hmm. That's how you got to think. You know what I'm saying? Like, to the point where, like, if you tell somebody this shit, they gonna be like, nigga, that's cap. Or or they gonna try to shoot you down, but I wasn't near anybody to tell that to. You get what I'm saying? Like, I started learning, like, the art of focus on strangers and not the people who know you. Mm. When we trying to start a business, we want our homeboy to wear our T-shirt. We want this nigga, and if he don't do it, we offended. We open up a restaurant. We care about the people who pull up. And once I shift my mind to straight strangers and building up my influence and just focus on that, my mindset took off. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? 
He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. And then everything took off. It was like a, a real paradigm shift but i always tell people living below your means is first so to the poor nigga who like what should i do first the first thing you got to do is cut all the bullshit off Mm. and he got to cut off his 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 homies who won't allow him to blossom like okay if if me and you buddies right there's an energy between me and you meaning if i want to persevere and i want to become something better and me and you always around each other. When you get lazy, that's gonna force me to be lazy. If I say, damn, I wanna go read a book, but then you like, hey, bro, let's go play 2K. I'm like, well, shit, bro, I wanna read. Nigga, one more game. Right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So now, you forcing me to not do what I wanna do. And I learned that no matter what, it's almost unavoidable. So you gotta separate yourself from these niggas for a little bit to get yourself right. Cause if not, you just gonna keep falling into that trap of, Influencing by them, influencing by them, influencing by them. It's crazy because, like, <clears throat> it's easier. This might sound crazy. It's easier to do that at a younger age because the older you get, the more stuck in your ways you become. Yeah. Right? So, like, if you if you have a, a – they say what? Um, a habit is it's like, hard to break, but it's easy to make or easy to create, some shit mm-hmm. like that. So, I feel like as as time go on and you get older, you get more stuck in your ways, right? Mm. But, like, when you young, that's when, like, niggas weren't focused on a lot of the bullshit. Like, it was, I know, shit, I didn't start drinking until I was, like, 21. But it was easy for me not to drink. It's like, bro, I play football. Like, I don't want to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? But I, I say all that to say, it definitely take a special type of person to be able to do that, though, right? To cut off their friends, to be dedicated, to be determined, to to cut out cut out all of the ex- unnecessary bullshit that they spend their money on. But everything happens for a reason, bro. Because it's like... I never live in one environment for more than three years. Mm. So it's easy for me to make new friends. I already have, I don't have attachment issues with people because we never live anywhere for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. My mom always moved. Like, I went Your to- Your pops was in the military, right? Step stepfather. Yeah, he didn't join until I was in high school, though. Mm-hmm. He didn't join until I was in 11th grade going to Creekside High School. So that was a shocker to me. Like, out of nowhere, they go from working AT&T buildings downtown, that big ass tall building downtown, AT&T, to this man joining the military mm. from going 60K to 30K salary. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so I'm a, uh, I was a, a junior in high school when that happened. But my mom quit her job when I was 14 years old. So I already came in with the mindset that I got to make some of myself since I was 14. Mm. Cause my mom, uh, quit her job so my dad got seven kids so it's like i don't got his income and i don't have my mom income so it's almost like when people see my situation they like oh he's he's well off but whole time i don't have anything you had to work for that though oh yeah for sure i think and what i'm saying is i think it still was something in you though like it still was like yeah. it was it was something that that resonated in your mind at a, at a young age right you, <clears throat> you can pass that you, you call yeah. jeff you could, um it was something in your mind that resonated at a young age that probably don't click with a lot of people that young. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm really trying to t- I'm cuz I f- I can relate to you like I, I feel you, you feel no, me? But I, get I feel what like you're the saying. everyday nigga ain't he, really like that, but sometimes yeah. you got to be accepted like every nigga just ain't ain't nah, <laughs> built like I, that. I used to think like that too like I used to think anyone could do it until I moved back to Atlanta. Mm. It was and that's no offense, it's just like you said I started learning that laziness is can be a talk trait mm. meaning like like i said we pinging energy off each other see if your mother was hard working your father was hard working your brother was hard working you gonna be hard working 
You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But if you got a house full of lazy motherfuckers, which most people do, it's easy to they, be they lazy. parents get off work, watch TV. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So guess what we train to do? Nine to five, TV. You get what I'm saying? Facts. So it's like, and I could be honest, like it was like I had good work ethic. When I got off work from the army, I had to work a 12 hour shift. As soon as I get off, I'm cutting hair. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's what attracted me to my wife because she, that was the only person I was pinging energy off of when I was hustling. Mm-hmm. So I was hustling before that, but like I said, the second half of my hustle, that's when I start rocking with her. You get what I'm saying? So it was because she got her schoolwork done. What happened was, it's funny because we dated by working hard. Like, I would get all my haircuts done from Monday through Friday, and she would get all her schoolwork and homework done from Monday through Friday. But and I would only see her on the weekends because, you know, she lived in Savannah. I live in uh, on base, so it was a 30-minute drive. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just see you every weekend. I just drive up there. I'll tell you shit. God damn it. Hold up. No, I hey, so you can, uh... Yeah, hey, hey, talk, talk, talk to Asia, bro. I'm, I'm doing an uh, interview. Yeah. Let me see that. You, you go get him. You can have Asia go get uh, Jeff. Yeah, we probably have to chop that part out. No, that's cool. All right, cool. Yeah, I put it on silent here. Let me give you both of my phones. Let's continue this good convo. You was finishing. You were saying, um, shit. What did you left off saying? Y'all met. Um, y'all was working. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all so, was uh, meeting every weekend. Yeah, so I was meeting my wife every weekend. So what that did was, like, that was already giving me, like, a strong work ethic. Cause I knew as soon as I get out, I gotta I gotta figure out how can I crunch in all these heads. So even for lunch, I'm cutting hair during lunch. I'm cutting hair like all weekend. I'm trying to finish all my heads from Monday through Friday. Mm. So I go kick it with her. She doing her schoolwork. She go kick it with me. So me- it was easy for us when we got together to work together. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like incorporate her in her business because I already seen how hard she was working, just so we could spend time. So let me ask you this. Do we, because again, because we're going to get to everything for real, so this might mm. be a little, I hope y'all got some time, man. Yeah, we got some time. But, um, do we do we try to help the ones that don't have it up here, or is it a thing where as though they're not mentally ready yet and we only talk to the ones who who are mentally prepared to put in the work but just don't know how to? To be honest, bro, I used to ask that same thing. Cause I'm a little like I got a heart, man. I be feeling yeah. better. I be wanting to help everybody. It's <laughs> called survivor's guilt. Yeah, for so, survivors so you, remorse, you for have sure. survivor's guilt. I had survivor's guilt, where we feel like because we've climbed out of the mental trap and the financial trap, we feel like everyone could do it. We can save everybody, but the truth is, bro, only the people who want it are mm. going to get it. Mm. And in life, there's going to be people who fall short. Like, somebody got to flip them burgers or McDonald's won't exist. That's a fact. Somebody got to sit behind that cash register. Somebody got to uh, be on call if something catch on fire. There's a, there's roles and system in this world where p- that people got to feel. Not mm. saying you stupid if you do all those things. I'm just saying, like, there's something – that, that someone has to do it has to be a trash man it has to be teachers it has to be this you get what i'm saying so mm-hmm. that's what the school system is designed to do people want to know why they're not teaching us how to get rich it's because who the hell is going to do society's roles if we're teaching these kids entrepreneurship mm. you get what i'm saying but now it's getting to a point where entrepreneurs are hiring people so it's, it's helping the economy still but i tell people we're trained to be people of society, mm. you know? And once you learn that, you'll you'll know that you're now in the matrix. Your mind is in the matrix. These young dudes don't realize um, you're mentally programmed to think that way. Mm-hmm. Like the Democrats, they, you know, the Democratic Party, you see the language they're speaking. Now that I'm rich, 
now that I'm mentally free, I see what they're doing. You see, you see what they're doing, right? We're going to get you free health care, free this, free that. What they're trying to do is keep those people from thinking for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what paychecks are for, too. If I can give you a monthly paycheck, that's going to entice you not to want to do your own thing. You get what I'm saying? So once you realize you're in some type of matrix and you're mentally programmed to think that way, you're going to start trying to get out of it. But it takes them to know that. They don't know it. But it's definitely a myth. I, I would be ignorant to ignore the mental cycle, but it's also like people aren't like us, though. Like people are scared to take those risks. So if I give you a, a, a paycheck, it's some, it's some, it's some um, sense of security there, right? So it's like, okay, I don't have to worry about because having to worry about where the next dollar is coming from is scary, right? And I could, I could have this conversation because, like, again, I was just over there, but I was going to um, talk to you about this, like, because you was, <clears throat> you was doing tech before, right? Yeah. Yeah, you was doing tech, and um, you was about to get your clearance and shit. Yeah. Right, I think um, for me, when I had that breakthrough was, like you said, it's about the, the people you hang around. Mm. Like, my friend, uh, my really close friend, my best friend, uh, like my brother, well, he's my brother for real, he did tech, and he got into some shit, and I'll be just uh, transparent, he, he got into some shit called Scrum. Or whatever, and like they was making like six figures and shit like that. And me, I ain't really, I ain't really know nothing about that shit for real. So like, I never forget. It was like a, you had to take a um a class, but like to 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 get your um what is it called? To get a cert. certification, yeah, yeah cert, get certification. Yeah. But the class they was charging niggas like twenty five hundred. Mind you, I'm not, I'm, I'm just getting by. Like, bro, I'm not trying to spend no twenty five hundred. Never forget, I spent that twenty five hundred, but the best thing I ever did because I was able to get a job that was making over 100k and then i understood that damn niggas is doing remote jobs i can get another one and i could double up you feel me i probably shouldn't be talking about nothing because i still got that job but i say that to say i feel like that circle of people is super important but because if you don't have that circle of people they aren't able to and it's not even about persuading you right they aren't they, you aren't, aren't able to see that ex, it exists right I, I see people like you i'm interviewing people like you niggas is showing me their phone millions of dollars i'm like damn i can get a million of dollars but it's, it's niggas that that ain't going to that ain't, that's niggas in the hood that ain't never see a nigga with a million dollars. So I, they ain't trying to hear what the fuck a nigga got to say, especially a nigga like me. I'm on camera. They think it's like, they, they think it's all made out when niggas don't understand. You feel what I'm saying? So I think that circle is. Seeing is believing. You yeah. know, because, you know, I say that to say uh, I knew a dude who had some money mm -hmm. before I had some money. Mm -hmm. So I noticed there's parallels with people who become rich. Mm -hmm. They always know somebody they got their foot in the door. Mm. You just got to know. You People don't realize you one person away Facts. from. And even if it's just like, like for instance, the dude I was rocking with, he was working in D.C. He was working at the White House, real influential dude, and he had paper. You get what I'm saying? And when I was young, I was enticed by that because I'm like, you know, we on Instagram. This man traveling, this is in 2014. This man in Bora Bora, Singapore everywhere like wherever mm. all the islands taking trips he in london he here he there before everybody was doing this dude had all the j's all the this and that so that's who i'm inspired by i'm not inspired by rappers because i never seen nothing in real life before mm. i never seen them make it without a label paying for it mm. i knew how that worked at that age so i'm like i'm looking for people who who know how to survive without knowing directly knowing the plug mm. you get what i mean so you the first person i seen do that and that inspired me mm. and i was like i got to become an entrepreneur no matter what the the goal believe it or not was always to be an entrepreneur or mm. a business owner since day one i came in the military knowing i was going to start a business that's why i started the barber thing and then i was like i but i knew i was going to start a tech business some way somehow i was going to make money online by selling to a lot of people. I was selling on eBay when I was 17. So there's parallels to everything I do. I've been working since I was nine years old. I always had a side hustle. I was knocking on people's doors, taking out trash. I was walking this kid home for $10 a week. So I was making $30 a week since I was nine. That's hard. I ain't never think about walking nobody home. I used to do that. I used to like cut niggas It was for protection because like I was living, uh, I was living in the hood at oh, the time. Shit. So. She had a, uh, the boy had to be in like five. He had to be in a uh, kindergarten or six, something like that. He was real small. I was 10 years old. 
but she was like, you know, because you good in the hood, you walk you walk my son home every week. Because mm. I know you're going to make it home. You know, and you're a badass kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? So she, but I was like a good one. I was, I was always kind of that way on the fence. Like, weren't nobody going to try me, but I wasn't into no trouble. Mm. But all the street dudes love me. I'm going to definitely get into the game. Niggas going to have to wait for that because you give a lot of game out for real. So yeah. hopefully you get a game out on this platform too. But when niggas going to have to wait for that. I just want to pick your brain. Just curious. Being so young and having so much money, right? Mm. You pro- I would have, probably had to ask your wife this. What are some things that like that's hard for you to understand, hard, that's hard to pen- penetrate your brain? Because I feel like being so young having a lot of money, nigga can't tell you. Nigga can't tell nigga like that shit. What are some things that like you still struggle with to this day that like niggas say some of, that's – Something you hard headed about? I might have to ask yeah, you. That's a great question. <laughs> Cause it's like, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh, 26 and making all these millions. Like nigga can't tell it. He probably can't tell that nigga shit. Nah, nigga really can't tell me shit. That's uh, I would say I'm gonna keep it 1,000. Like I don't get that too much thought. Mm-hmm. Like if you give that because when you get money, there's going to be people who want to tell you what to do with your money. Mm. But when you put things into perspective, you're like, okay, you got a lot of advice. <laughs> but you Why don't. don't you go apply it? You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm so, so like, all rich niggas. You see look, Kanye West on there like, but I got my billionaire. What the fuck you got? Like, that's crazy. So it's like, it's like, you know, I had to tell somebody that in my family though one time. I ain't going to lie to you. I'd be completely transparent. I was like, man, look, I got, you got nephews who ain't got no money. This man over here, like, dropped out of, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. These folks ain't getting no money. Why is everybody spending time trying to tell me what I'm doing wrong and I'm up 10 M's? Mm. This person hasn't made a 10,000 yet. Y'all need to go give all that advice and channel all energy on him because mm. y'all wasting time. You get what I'm saying? I figured this out on my own. I'm out of there. There's nothing you could tell me. Mm. I can see if you invested some money into my campaign. I can see if you paying my house note. Like, I listen to advice from people. I do. Like, if someone tell me, hey, that ain't it, I'm going to listen. Like, I, I'm not stubborn like that. Like, I definitely listen to my wife's opinion. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I want her to tell me it ain't it. Or if an idea ain't it. I like, I like criticism. And that's how I was able to make this much money because I'm not, I don't like the yes man thing. I want, like, general opinions and like I call but I only talk to like three people and all three people you see me talk to just now the dude who was calling my phone him and my wife mm. you know what I'm saying like I talk to them about what I'm doing in the business it don't leave that see I'm thinking about more so on like the betterment of like being a man right because I feel like when you again because they always say like money ain't everything that's easy to say when a nigga got money or like I just feel like me I'm I'm about to I'm about, I'm gonna be a millionaire for sure you get what I'm saying but me not being that I can see how ignorant I could be towards just making a lot of money because I ain't get it yet you feel me like a nigga could always say what he gonna do when he in a position but he ain't in that position you feel me it's always easy to say what you would do what you would have could have should have right but I feel like what is what are some things that like that you challenge yourself with about just manhood it's just life you get what I'm saying like outside of the money. Um, balance. Um, that's one of the hardest things to find mm. in 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 any stage of your life. I don't care if you're 60, 40, 50, balance between making sure I give my wife enough time, my kids enough time, my business enough time, me enough time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, doing the things I like to do. Mm. Uh, making sure I have time to do everything in life. That's what it is about finding that perfect balance, making sure I'm not focused too much on business because that's going to hurt me. If I spend too much time with my wife, it's going to hurt the business. Mm. Spend too much time with my kids and just try to be a second mom to my kids, it's going to hurt the business. You get what I'm saying? So learning that too as a man, I used to struggle with that. Like, damn, like, am I supposed to be right here changing every diaper trying to be a second mom to the kid and then i spoke to an og he let me know like men never did that we go out and get it 
and we, you know what I'm saying, we protect, we provide and protect, you shouldn't feel guilty for putting, you know, putting what you can into the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that you would feel guilty about. When, and you know, most business owners feel guilty about that is the, the you know, like a, a middle class broke nigga got all time in the day to spend with his goddamn kids. You feel me? Like he, but it's like with us, we, it's like two hours a day type thing. Mm -hmm. And even that, but it's something. You get what I mean? I think that's the beauty in having like a, a good woman by your side too, though. Make like, sure I, she hold it down, yeah. I think they the ones, because like, I've been with my girl for like five years now, almost five years. She was the one that taught me balance, right? She was the one that taught me like enjoy um, the fruits of my labor, enjoy the small wins and things like that. Because at first, before I met her, I was always on the go. Like I'm always working. Like Never I don't got time. Never be 100% in anything, bro. Mm. I had to learn that. I can't even be 100% in my business. I got to go 90. Because mm. if I give it 100, if you give 100% to anything, it's going to... It's gonna fuck up something. You always gotta get everything by the ninety. Mm. You gotta say something for yourself in everything you do, and that's some of the biggest lessons I learned. How important is it to choose the right woman for what you got going on in your life as a man? Very, very important because, like, even today I was talking to a young dude about that. Um, to like, for instance, my wife right now is working on my Black Friday stuff while I'm doing this interview. She behind the camera. Working on that, um, I tell I told dude, this is how important it is. If let's just say me and you doing a business together, or let's just say I hire you, mm -hmm. you're only gonna work the time you're paid to do. Then you but barely you, gonna work that shit. Exactly. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Then then and then you gotta take two hours off that because the nigga's slow to get in mm -hmm. and, and quick, quick to leave. To you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a fact. So, so it's like you know, like you might well take whatever that is minus the two hours. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you got a girl next to you, for one, you ain't gotta pay her the money stay in house. Mm. For two, um, time. We're working at twelve o'clock at night versus y your time is up. So we're spending more time on the business. So it's easier for me to get ahead of my comp because I don't have to go and talk to the CPA. She's talking to the CPA while I'm still making content. Mm. I don't have to go and drive to the tag office to get my tags. We got people to go do that. She gonna facilitate those plays, those everyday plays. You gotta, you literally gotta literally crunch down as much time that's what a woman should do for her man if he got a business. Literally, buy as much time. He needs as much time as he can to spend on his business. So that's what a woman should do for a man that got a business, right? What about those women who would say, what about me, right? What, what Those women that would be like, well, I got to work too. I got to do this as well. They what ain't for me. Mm. They, I, I like women to support it, but that's, that's just for – different different people mm -hmm. my mom always told me successful women will have to suffer in their relationship and she's right mm -hmm. like i ain't saying women don't go out and be successful but if you ain't building with a man then when when you become successful you know what i'm saying unless he's more successful than you why do you think beyonce is with jay-z and it's and it's working mm -hmm. if this was some dude if he was a little flip she would have been cut buddy off because she's outgrowing him. Mm. You get what I mean? So women don't like when they outgrow men, but men can outgrow women and be fine. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A woman, a, a girl, money is not a requirement for you, is it? For a girl to have out the gate. Sure, I don't know. That's the last, probably the last thing I'm thinking about. We're not thinking about that. Yeah, That's, they I'm thinking about myself. that. That's a requirement for them. Mm. Security. Mm. So... I'm going based on how I'm naturally wired as a man. I'm not going by what society is. I want a, a, a girl who can survive on her own still. My, my wife has a college degree, all of that. But I'm not saying, but I feel like people need to build together. Even if she's a real estate agent, you're tech, cool. If y'all don't work on something together, whether it's building a real estate portfolio. You know what I'm saying? It don't always have to be business. It could be we're investing into these homes, our Airbnb portfolio, our empire. 
you have to build some type of financial empire and she has to be some what a part of your system in order for it to work mm. but what happens is people come together based on we're nice to each other we're having a good conversation and we're attracted to each other that's it until they get to the point of okay where are we going and where do you want to go in life and where do i want to go in life and usually it's and that's what separates the couples every time it's that yo what's popping this episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. Social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10, you get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices. And especially those hard conversations, I feel like a lot of times we, um, I was watching Joe Button podcast and they was just talking about how like a lot of times you go on four dates and now y'all together, right? Like y'all, y'all skip so many steps and like, let's, let's not even drag the friendship aspect of it because we always say you got to be friends first, but let's not even, let's, let's fast forward a little bit. A lot of times things can work, but people don't even have those hard conversations. Right, um, like I was talking to a guy, Kyrie Tyrell, shout out to him. Shout out mm-hmm. to him. He was like, "Bro, like having those hard, those hard conversations, like, yo, what happens if I if I if I lose my job and you gotta take care of the bills? What happens if X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z? What what? How does that look then? Because what happens is once you get there, you're not prepared for that, and then now with so much tension in the house. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of those, yeah, what? like it's like they building separate. Like, okay, let's just say you get with a girl. Okay, y'all splitting the bills. Y'all not putting no nothing together. Y'all not even putting nothing together. Like, y'all not building any type of anything together. What brings people together is building something together. I always tell dudes to do this one thing. If you want to test what type of girl you got, do a thousand-piece puzzle with her. Mm. If she quits, she ain't the girl for you. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because you want to see what type of girl do I have. Is she going to get the job done? You get what I'm saying? Is she going to motivate me to finish this puzzle? Mm. Are we going to look for it's going It's going to be certain times. I, I just I just challenge you, brother. Go do a puzzle with your girl. It's one of the most intimate things you could ever do mm. mentally. See, a lot of dudes lost the mental attraction for women. They no longer care about the mental because they're so blinded by the physical because that's what society has embedded into their heads. Mm. But me, I'm... I'm sexually attracted mentally to women. Like, can we can we get tasks done together? Can we figure out something, an aha moment? There's so many times we've cracked the codes on certain shit. I'm talking about shit that's not possible. And that shit, shit is possible. sexy, though. Like, that that's so hard. sexy. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, like, damn, we just fucking made 100K, and we spent 48 hours trying to figure this out. Like, we done did shit like that. So let me ask you this. Speaking of these hard conversations, right? When it comes to like marriage, I think I just seen a producer. He was uh, married to somebody for a long time. Time they uh, broke up, and I guess uh, she ain't signed a prenup, and he wasn't giving her nothing, right? So I was trying to have a conversation with my girl about prenup. She's like, I'm not signing no prenup, and I'm like, honestly, me personally, I feel like a a, a prenup could be in favor for the woman, right? I feel like it, it could be like, cause me, I ain't no, I ain't no shiesty ass nigga. So if I do a prenup, like it's going to be some percentage to you, some percentage to me. You know what I'm saying? It's just not about to be all of it unless you put in. If it, if you put in fifty percent of the work, we go do fifty fifty. I'm curious to, to know from your perspective, mm. how do you handle those conversations, or is that a conversation that even come up? We weren't focused on money when we got married. Mm. Like that shit weren't even about that. But that's one of them hard conversations. No, what I'm no, saying. no, that's no. One like, of them like, hard conversations. like, like. So that means technically she's half owner of my business. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, that's the conversation we have. Hey, this is if we if we literally stop being together tomorrow, you get half of this shit. So guess what? You gotta do half the work. That's the real conversation. That mm. means that's really what y'all need to be having. Like, okay, there's no prenup involved. That means you got to pull in half, I got to pull in half. This is your business too. Mm-hmm. It's a part of your legacy. So regardless of anything, help me run this shit up to 100 M's and you get 50. <laughs> no, that's some real shit. shit. You feel no, me? I, I, that's God some real damn. shit. That's some real shit. I just feel like because we see so many situations where like a nigga get a, 
break up with a uh, shorty or they get a divorce. I don't care about take taking 50. that half shit because we real hustlers. Mm, not facts. So so all I need is, you get, bro, I can literally take 10000 and go turn into an M. Mm. So taking, giving me half of 100 M's, okay, give me half of 10, I got five. See, that's for niggas who don't got a, a plan. I'm a real hustler, mm. a real one. You get mm. what I'm saying? This ain't no one-time thing. This ain't no... This is, I'm going to figure this shit out regardless. All right, bet. Let's, what, where we at, Kyron? What, what time we at, man? What's the time, Sam? All right, let's get into this money shit, man. Let's get it. Nigga, you said 10, you said 10 bands, right? Mm. Uh, I think one time you said something like 80-20, right? You put up 80% of what you're trying to invest, and you put in 20, right? Let's start from the beginning. We talk about, because mind you, I don't know nothing. Just Let's paint the picture. I don't know nothing about stocks, right? Mm. First of all, before we get into it, let me ask you a question. What, you got e-books. Mm. You do a lot of giving game online. Mm. How do you draw the line between how much game you get and what you're giving off online, but still trying to make money selling ebooks? Is it the same thing? Is it something different in the ebooks that you that you're not giving, or is it? I was blessed to be in a a, a world with too much information. Mm. So, let me give you an example. There's only so much you can talk about Toro. Because it doesn't change. Mm. The stock market changes every single day. So it gives this un I guess this unstoppable amount of unpredictability. Because it'll always be unpredictable, people will need to pay me. Mm. No matter how much game I give you. Mm. You're going to need to see me do it. And you're going to want to be a part of my community. Because it's hard to watch the stock market by yourself. So you're going to be trying to trade by yourself and then you're going to see us make money and then you're going to be like, well, what did I miss today? Hmm. So the community of trading is also the benefit that people like. Like there are people in my chat who make a lot of money, but we enjoy it. People don't like to be alone on the journey of getting money. Hmm. So it's the community aspect of it too. And then I can literally go on for an hour on one topic, but there's like, fucking 20 more in the stock market. And then the stock market is changing every second. Every second is history. Do you know that? Mm. Just imagine that every second that goes by in the stock market is a new piece of history. Mm. Is a new piece of data. Is a new piece of everything. So that's what makes, I, I would just bless to choose a niche that's so vast to where if there's 20 things, let's just say it's one through 20. I can give you three and sell you 17, the rest of the 17. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I or that. I can give you 10 of that 20 and sell you the other half for the 20. Bro, let's get my people like 15, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> just, just, just look out for me, dog. Come on, man. Right. So so it's like <laughs> like I can give three from, from, from one to 20. I can get three on this podcast. I and it still won't be enough. I just give him fifteen. I just give him fifteen, bro. Just look out for him. You know what I'm saying? Every time he's a I mean, <laughs> whatever they. The thing is, they will have to see it visually on the chart. But the first thing I want to say is, if you're interested in getting into the stock market, like getting started, I'm going to give y'all the true game. The stock market is for people with access capital. So, if I tell people what I did was I. Say I I live off of my army income and I invested my barber money. Mm -hmm. So whether I win, lose, or draw, that's money I've already got my expenses taken care right, of. Right, it's extra bread. Well, it's so not this extra isn't bread, something yeah. you should use to climb from poverty. This is something usually people who are all who already have some change. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like most people who invest with me already were. You know what I'm saying? Those type of people. So that's why only getting money people follow me. Let me ask you this then before yeah. we get into the game. Because I got questions. Before we get into the game, let's say for the, the nigga, the lazy nigga, right? But he got the bread. Mm. Do you do you offer a service where somebody can just pay you to invest their money? Like like when you do your your, your day trade and stuff like that? Like y'all got so, 10 bands, I'll pay yes. you to do it. So, but it's it's indirectly because if you, if you give a man a fish... He'll eat for that day. If you teach him how to fish, he'll eat forever. So what I'm if he want to be taught? What if he's just like, yo, just do it for me. I can pay you to do it. Would you do that or not? Nah? There are people who offer like certain things like that, but like it's it's very inaccurate. Mm. It's like hedge funds lose so much money. You know how many people give people money and they lose it? 
like that that just and then it's it's too stressful on, on, on let's just say i lose your money let's just say you give me 100k and i lose that you gotta deal with this motherfucker deal with that motherfucker you nah, get what i'm man. saying so yeah, it's man. like you gonna put trouble on yourself trying to do that trying to step into something you actually got to go to the stock market and actually go and learn so i know how to manage you know tens of thousand dollars a day i don't know how to manage millions mm. you get what i'm saying now granted i manage my millions but i'm managing portions of those millions so yes i have a, a millions of dollars in the stock market so i am managing millions technically mm. but those are my millions you get what i mean all right so let's get into it man Kyron, where we at i just want to make sure i make a mark of that so i can tell people where to go 48, 48. all right bet so first thing we would say for the stock market right i just want to say uh <clears throat> Get some extra income, right? So if you a nigga that got a job and you struggling right now, let's say, go learn how to cut hair, right? Yes. Or shit, pay twenty five hundred. I don't know how much it costs now. Get you a little scrum job on the side, whatever, right? Right. Get something so you can make extra money outside of paying bills. Step yes, one. Yes, that's right? step one. All right. Once we get there, mm. we want to be able to. What well, I think you said, want to understand education. The four. Education. I, and I think so. You so getting getting some money, getting some. It's called cash flow. Mm. So. No business can survive without cash flow. Okay. So how can you survive without cash flow? My cash flow was barber money. I got this 3K coming in to invest in. Win, lose, or draw. It's still going to come in. So even if I lose that entire 3K, another one coming in. Mm -hmm. Cash flow is important. Okay. Get cash flow. Cash Second, flow. education. And I think you was, you was saying the first part about education is uh, – the fundamentals, right? Like four steps or something like that, right? I think. Yes. Um, risk management. Mm -hmm. That is uh, literally managing your money. So you have to learn that. That's number one when you step into the stock market. If you want to be a profitable trader, risk management. For one, you got to learn the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So fundamental is study of a company's profitability and their data. So they're the insides of their earnings. Where is the money going? How much are they winning or losing? Are they net profitable? Mm. So a lot of times you'll be investing in companies that you didn't even check to see if they were profitable. You just worried about this, the share price. That's where fundamentals come in. Like Snapchat isn't a profitable company. Right. But could you, did you, do you, did you know that? I knew that because I did my research on you. So like you, okay. a website, like you go to, you can find out the green, red, you see what, uh, what companies are uh, are profitable? I think you said Square. Square. If I did one the last, I know PayPal is profitable. I gotta yeah. see if Square is all the way profitable. No, you did some. They I know be because I did some research for yeah. you, right? But I don't think it was a fundamental. I think you said the first thing was maybe the foundation. You teach the foundation. I think it was something like uh, uh, what was it? Super resistance. Um, support and resistance. Candlesticks. It was like four things, right? That's. Yeah. So like you gotta learn the foundation, which is that's that's the trading part. That's called technicals. Okay. So technicals are is the study of price charts, your candlesticks, your support and resistance, all that lines and fancy stuff. That's what we use to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So all you gotta know is the right setups. Mm -hmm. So I make it easy for people. I call them second is the high probability setups. So risk management is first managing your money. That's important. It's the most important. You would think it's the setups. Setups is the second most important. So managing money, let's, let's, let's be slow for the people that don't know. Get a pen and a pad right now, right? So managing your money. Um, you want me to elaborate more on that? Yeah. So if you got $2,500, right, mm -hmm. let's just say, and I hold up my hand, every finger is worth $500, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say I'm using risk management. I got a $2,500 account. Okay, you already said something about $2,500, so it's perfect. Let's say they wanted to invest that twenty five hundred after gaining the knowledge, and they have cash flow, mm. right? To replace that twenty five hundred, just in case they lose it. Cool. I'm going to use five hundred dollars, right? So I'm investing five hundred. All I want is twenty percent off of that. That's a hundred dollars. Mm. Cool. I got two thousand dollars left to invest of my money. I already leveraged five hundred. You can only play with what you put in. You know what I'm saying? Unless you got twenty five k. That's when they let you day trade unlimited. Mm. But with 425K, you can only play with what you put in. So $500, I make 100. I use another 500. I make another 100 off that. 
that's two hundred dollars. So you gotta think. All I did was invest a thousand dollars. Got got two, what two hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and then what I got fifteen hundred left to leverage. But I already made more than my nine to five would pay me. Mm-hmm. If they paying me ten dollars an hour, and I work eight, that's eighty dollars. I just made two hundred dollars, leveraging one thousand dollars. Because I remember you got to pimp your money. Most people think you're supposed to flip. Some people will say, "Well, that's nothing." So what you telling me is, you would much rather work eight hours for eighty dollars than work an hour for two hundred mm-hmm. and leverage a thousand twenty percent. People look at those percentages and say, "Well, why didn't you just go get a hundred? Try getting a hundred every single day and watch how you lose." Mm-hmm. You want to pimp your money, so put it out there, bring some back. Let's go back then. So, what do we need to know before we even get to that? Because you say we gotta have that educa- education, right? What mm-hmm. do I need to know if I don't know nothing, right? If I had to go to you, if if you gave me your ebook game right now for my people, if you could, right? What's mm-hmm. the first thing? Like you said, we need the education first. What do I need to know? What's the first thing I need fundamentals. to fundamentals. Fundamentals. All right, what's that? How to know if a company is profitable and how how we do that? The websites, you know, all of that. Yahoo Finance, you can check the financials. Um, let's paint I, a picture. I, so, I, okay, let's paint a picture. I if download on, the app. If I'm on, you have to go on the website. If I'm on Yahoo Finance, okay, I would type in Snap. Mm-hmm. I would go to a tab that says financials. Mm-hmm. Then I would go and see on their balance sheet whether they are net profitable. So you would scroll down to see net profitable and to see are they net profitable this quarter and this year. So I'm looking at the quarters and the years. Are you profitable quarter to quarter? Because every company has to report their earnings every quarter. So you're going to see every quarter whether a company is profitable, Mm -hmm. right? So that's first and foremost. Uh, Knowing that you're investing in a profitable company in the first place is important. That's for long-term investing. Mm -hmm. Now with trading, it's mainly about technicals. So long-term investing is about, so if you were to buy shares, you're going to be using fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Long-term, meaning holding forever. If you're trying to day trade, which means pimp the stocks, you're going to need charts because you're trying to capitalize off the quick hits. So that's why you need the candlesticks. Mm -hmm. That's why you need support and resistance. Support is your floor. Resistance is your ceiling. So, Support is your floor. Resistance is your ceiling. We like to buy stocks when the price shoots above resistance. We like to buy calls, which means betting on a stock to go up. And we like to buy puts if the price breaks support, meaning we're betting on it to go down now. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's almost like we're on the, let's just say we're on the third floor, right? If I shoot up, if I shoot bullets up and that bullet breaks through the ceiling and broke resistance. Mm -hmm. So that means it's strong enough to keep going. You get what I'm saying? So that means volume. The speed of the bullet would be our volume. You get what I'm saying? So if that bullet has enough volume to break this ceiling, I'm going to buy. But Mm -hmm. if that bullet has weak volume, means weak speed of the bullet, then it's probably going to bounce from the ceiling, bounce down. How downward. do you see that when you're looking at the uh, charts? Like so that? volume would be at the bottom of the chart. So volume is what I use to determine whether that support or re- so that resistance or support break was valid. Mm. So if it breaks support with rising volume, high volume, it gives me an indicator that it can go down more. If it breaks resistance with rising volume, then it gives me an indicator that it can keep going. If it breaks resistance with weak volume, then, like I said, the bullet might bounce. It might pew, bounce. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, fall from it. So you would bet on the, the put? Is that what I would called? buy puts. You yeah. would buy puts. And the volume, is it saying that on the chart as well? Is it saying The bar. Will- so every candle. So if this is a new so if this is a new candlestick, there will be a corresponding volume right under it, like literally. So, What's the colors? Because I, th- I know it's a so lot of colors. So if it's a green time. candlestick, it'll mm-hmm. have a corresponding green volume bar. Mm-hmm. under it right so what you're looking for is to match those and to to judge the volume but that's just one strategy mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying that i like to use is breaks of resistance or support key levels of resistance or support with volume volume is is one of the, that's what that could be your bread and butter 
and then retest we like to do so let's just say it breaks the, the candlesticks start to break resistance and then after it breaks resistance it comes that resistance now becomes support see what i'm saying so after it broke that resistance line you keep that line there it breaks we like to buy when it comes and retest that same level it broke and then we buy calls from there so all this is real time so like if i go yep. on it right now and i'm like okay i just want to watch to see if it breaks mm. right yeah i could see this and i could buy it how long do i stay but in? that's how where i come I? in you get what i'm saying that's where i come and guide you so you're so that's where i that's when i brought in the live trading because people were, were complaining like hey i'm seeing this i'm seeing that but i need to see somebody do this mm. but i can't be right next to you so i said cool i'm gonna run a zoom and i'm gonna show you my charts so i show you me entering the play I show you me scouting out where I'm gonna even enter the play at too. Mm -hmm. I show everything. And you gotta be, and you, I know you gotta like what the day trading is. Is a certain time like nine to eleven thirty, something like that. Mm -hmm. so, Eastern time. So if I if I'm doing that, or if I, let's say I, I want to watch you do it, how much would that cost? Two hundred dollars a month. A month, and you do it every day. Yes. Wait, so. So you're going to make your money back either the first day or in two days. So why, like, why, why don't if you could assume why don't people get this? I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. I'm trying to reach some bit different people. I'm trying to help some people right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why wouldn't I like for the naysayers? Not, of course, you, 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 you see all the positive things like that. But for the people risk that need some things, risk management is going to kill the person. I'm gonna keep it one thousand. Two hundred dollars. No, 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 no. Oh, talk to me. Even if I give you everything, if you lack poor risk management, if you, that 2500 if you invest, I told you to invest 500 at a time, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be that one guy who invests 2000 of that. Because they want to be greedy. You get what I'm saying? So imagine he has poor risk management every trade, meaning his account size is 2500 but he keeps investing 1500 2000 You get what I'm saying? That's what's going to kill people. It's just that. That's why. Why do you think I said it's first? <coughs> because you might think, man, that shit is so simple. You're, you're naturally going to get greedy. It's kind of like gambling almost, right? Because you're going to make money. Right. That's okay. the point. Okay. So when you get your first taste of that money, it's a high that everybody gets. When you make your first 1000 <laughs> You're going to be so high, mm. and you're going to be so joyful, and you're going to be like, tomorrow I'm making three. <laughs> that day. I'm serious. That's, that's what where happens. That's where you go wrong. That's where people go so, wrong. But if I, can, if I can make, I don't know, $200 a day. A day. It's, two, it's 250 trading days in a year. Mm. $100 a day is a 25K salary. Mm -hmm. But what happens is somebody going to have 25K and put in 10000 Knowing that if you had a 25K account, you should probably be risking 2500 every trade, 10% mm. of your account. You get what I'm saying? That's why I said risk management is first, not last, not second, not third, not fourth. It's the first thing you got to master to win in, in, this, in this game because of that. Once you, once you get the knowledge, because that's what's going to happen. When you fuck with me, I'm going to give you all the knowledge. Mm. I'll be the first person you'll ever meet to give you what you need to succeed. Okay, so it costs it cost $200 a month. Yes. To fuck with you, right? How much should I have coming to the table? $2,500 or? That's a great start. $2,500. Damn. Okay. So go go find some, go become a barber or some shit, make it $2,500. You know what I'm saying? We'll make $2,700, give you the $200. Then we're going to come and make Well, some. what I got is this program. It starts with $550 where I give them the whole game, teach you from start to finish. Then while you're learning, you get to watch me live trade. Mm. So while you're learning, you're seeing me apply what you've learned. Mm. And then, so after that 550, it's $200 a month. Okay, so 750. That's how much it costs to be successful and get down with me. If you want the whole package quickly, that's the quickest way to get into this is that Seven fifty, damn! And you seen how people make millions off of seven fifty? Thousands and millions, yes. 
Like how much? Hundreds, thousands? hundreds of thousands, twenty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand. That's like the average. In the course of how 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 much? How long? In a year to month span. And that's pretty every single day. Some people making a thousand dollars a day. There's people making a hundred dollars a day. There's people making. There's like I literally have so many members. I have about seven k members. So there's going to be. I got a hundred. I got a thousand of them making a hundred dollars a day. A thousand of them making two hundred dollars a day. A thousand of them making five thousand a day. What's the what differentiate the two? Like from being a really good person trader making a thousand dollars a day versus being average making a hundred dollars a day. So I got real studies on this shit. I wanted a few people who got real life data points on this shit. Mm -hmm. I just told you most successful traders had great financial backing prior to trading. I didn't shy away from that. I'm not even going to sit here and pretend like I've heard of some nigga who came from the ghetto. You get what I'm saying? Like, if he did, he was the best trapper. Like, I got trappers in my damn, you know what I'm saying? In my chat. I got real drug dealers, real street niggas in my chat. You feel me? Turn that street money in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then I got doctors, lawyers, uh, high-ranking military people, colonels, all of them. Like, those are the type of people in my chat, like chiropractors, doctors, people who have a lot of money, mm. and then, or people like like just some of the world's greatest hustlers are in my chat. Those are the people I attract, Asians, everybody. It don't matter, white people, black people. Because one thing I learned, money, because I used to think the same thing. What white man would buy this shit for me? Boy, you'll be surprised. But then I'm the same way. I buy some white man shit if he's talking about money. He can say a million things about Trump. He can have a Confederate flag on the back of it, but that motherfucker can prove to me he can make me some money. I can care less. So it's the only real separation is who you are as a person, I guess, like you were saying, I guess. Like, the people that's already... It don't, bro. Listen, bro. If you got value, no one cares what you look like or what or what you stand for if you can help them make money. No, I'm saying I like in that. the trading, right? For somebody that's just getting, I'm trying to figure out what separates the nigga that's making $1,000 to the niggas that's only making $100. And I guess it's what, the background of people that's already, that's already, um, I don't know. Um, Mentality, how much he's able to risk and how much he's able to stomach. You get what I'm saying? Like his 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 stomach, his, his risk tolerance. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like the person who's risking, who's making $1,000 a day is comfortable with losing $1,000 a day. Mm -hmm. The person who's making a hundred dollars a day is not comfortable taking a thousand dollar loss, so he sticks to his risk management. I'm only invest five hundred. I'm only invest two hundred, three hundred, cause I only want a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. You get what I'm saying? That so they're going to invest in the five hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar range. The person with, who making a thousand is leveraging maybe five to three thousand. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So always remember that if somebody's making gains, that's usually people usually only make about twenty percent of what thirty percent of what they leverage usually on average from what I see, like a twenty to thirty. Let's just say thirty percent. So if you see me make, not really though, because if you see me make three thousand, yeah, I guess you can say that I leverage. Maybe nine thousand to make three. Like today, I made three thousand. Mm -hmm. I leverage a nine to make it. Okay. You get what I'm saying? If somebody made two hundred dollars in my chat, they probably leverage six hundred. You get what I'm saying? That makes sense. That makes sense. So you got to be kind of okay with losing that six hundred though. But the thing is, you can pull out any time. So let's just say. You, but that's what a stop loss is for. And I think you said that you go, you could set it right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like let's just say you risk two, you risk six hundred dollars, right? And you have a stop loss of twenty percent, right? Or let's just say five, you risk five hundred dollars. You have a stop loss of twenty percent. You're going to pull out of that trade if you lose a hundred dollars, but then you still got four hundred dollars to play with. Get get back in another trade. That's mm -hmm. why risk management is important. If you follow risk management, you'll be successful. The moment. You deem away from risk management. I don't care what you know. I don't care what strategy you heard of. You got the best working strategy in the world. If you don't know how to put the proper amount of money in at the right time and know when to go big in something and when not to, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. okay. I know what to go big in and what not to go big in. That's the only difference between me and the other person. 
When the last time you lost in this shit? This shit, is all day uh, trading, right? No, no, no. no. Um, Thursday, I mm. lost six bands. Why? Well, how you? How, how did that happen? Shit, false breakouts. I play the same setups, but it can, it's gonna come a time where setups don't work. But see, here's the thing about people like me. I go on streaks. So I can go on a 20-day winning streak. And then day 21, I don't want to be wrong. Because mm. I'm used to not being wrong. You get what I'm saying? And those, believe it or not, that's when you lose a lot of money. When you go on a winning streak. Mm. Because you're going to keep pouring in. You're going to keep putting in money like, nah, I ain't wrong. I've been doing this shit for, oh, shit, I'm wrong. I'm in too deep, and I fail. It's risk management is what fails me. Mm. But I guess you can, you could. It's still like risk versus reward. You st now you have a little bit more to risk at this point. So losing six bands after you just made shit. Yeah, but I'm just telling hundred. you that that's how I lose. Okay, is it's it's a high probability setup. Meaning, I'm going out of a hundred times, I'm going to win eighty percent, eight eighty of those times. So let's just say. I put in 10 bands and I take the same setup a hundred times and I take profits at 20%, 2,000 every trade, right? I have made 20, I have made 2,000 80 times, but then there's that 20 that I lost playing the same setup. That's all it was. I played the same setup. That was the day it lost. Mm. What about this? I'm just curious. If a nigga, let's say a businessman, right, make a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Could he pay ten people? Let's just, I don't know, ten people to take your class, mm -hmm. right? And he put in, I don't know, the ten thousand dollars with that ten people, mm -hmm. and and multiply that, or is it better for him to just take it and take that uh, hundred thousand dollars himself if he can, if he can, uh, if he can, he can do whatever he want to do with his money. If he want to do what's that, smarter? I wouldn't know. What's smarter? Do it himself. But a hundred hundred K if he can afford to lose it. I tell people if you can't manage ten thousand, you can't manage a hundred K. So I always tell people to start off small regardless. Cause I want you to lose ten thousand before you lose a hundred. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I always start small. Okay. We always compare our chapter one to someone's chapter ten. But what I learned is you can never get there. That's like, for instance, me starting a podcast. I just watch you tell him what, hey, bro, what time it is. That's some shit I don't know. Why? Because I'm still on chapter two. You on battle with chapter eight of this shit, right? Well, what chapter are you in? <laughs> it's a couple chapters. You get what I mean? Like, you, 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 you've done enough of this. Oh, man. You guys shit. done enough of this. I done learned it's some the same shit. shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, you trying to step in my lane. And you trying to get to chapter 10, I've been doing this for five years. Mm -hmm. Damn, I've been doing this for like five years. That's crazy. No way I could come in this motherfucker and be as efficient as you. Mm. Do you really think I can start a podcast tomorrow and know every single thing you know? Damn, that's a great segue. You, you might be good at this shit, bro. Because if I teach you, you might not know everything I know, but you skip so many steps. Like if Thank I can you. give you the game. Yeah, you can give me the game where I can get a shortcut, mm. but it's still going to be a learning curve. For the niggas that say it doesn't work or – because I feel like every – I'm just – this is like a breakthrough moment for me. Like being in Atlanta is so special because I'm seeing everybody saying like selling e-books and selling their service and selling consultations and shit. You know, my first – because I'm fresh out the fresh out the boat, I still got that nigga mentality like, man, these niggas is finessing. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody sells something. Yeah. Right? So for that, and I think I heard David Shannon talk about this. He was like, man, it was somebody who was like teaching something and everybody was like he was a scammer until you heard him speak in person. He was like, nah, this nigga know his shit. What about like that 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 scammer word? Did you do you hear that shit go around when like trying to like sell people an ebook or something like that because it don't work for them? Not me. You don't hear that shit go I around? ain't heard it on my end, but you get what I'm saying? Like, I knew I knew how to avoid being called that. How do you avoid that? By actually doing the right fucking thing. What is that? That means actually I live trade. Mm -hmm. How can you call somebody a scam if you can literally come on my Zoom and watch me do it? Mm -hmm. That's why you won't see nobody calling me a scam. Because okay. I literally 
show you the money I make and the losses I make. So is the game to be really, is it really to be told or sold? So really, is it really to be sold? But you got to give people something. Mm. And what I learned is, even if you don't know it, it's Chinese to you. So I can say a whole bunch of yabba, 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 yabba about the stock market. It's Chinese to you because you don't even know it. Okay. So now you're intrigued to know what the hell I'm talking about. Because now I'm, I'm fuck, y'all got y'all a little piece. I'm talking about me now. So like this ebook thing, right? Because everybody, like, you can write an ebook, write an ebook, show right. people what to do, make money, make money. Right. But I'm like, I can't really give you gibberish. It's like I'm gonna either get, I'm gonna give you the game to tell you how to do this shit, and then I'm gonna lose money on trying to sell my ebook or like, how, what you mean gibberish? How do you know what to say, what not to say when you're trying to do this ebook shit? Because you got an ebook. Yeah. Like, how do you know how how, how much to give <laughs> compared to what the whole bag on? So. The thing is, if you want to keep something from somebody, put it in a book. Mm -hmm. So the chances of a nigga reading your whole book in the first place is slim. So you might as well give him everything because the nigga ain't going to read it in the first place. Okay. <laughs> Just keeping it 1,000. And the, that do and the people it, who do read it aren't value. trying to copy you in the first place. They want to learn from you. Mm. So we're worried about people copying us. You hate a nigga, right? Are you buying his shit? Nah, if I hate a nigga. Thank you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you don't like this person, so your haters aren't going to buy your shit anyway. Mm. You get what I mean? So you shouldn't. And then on top of that, you're on chapter 10. They're on chapter 1. So like you said, you can give me everything about how to how to do a podcast. I still got to start. That's about, yeah, that's, a, that's, the, that's honestly the hardest saying? part, though. A I still got to start, and then I still got to be consistent, and I got to not give up. So, okay, you get what I'm saying? That's like some real shit. This is some real you shit. You get what I'm saying? So, there's no reason you should hide the game from them in the first place because 10% of them are going to apply it. Mm -hmm. So, I've sold over 200K copies of my ebook. Shouldn't I have 200K customers? I would hope so. I don't. I have 20K. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like. So do you put marketing, like, do you put, uh, like, ads on your ebook, like, when you're trying to sell it? How do you how do you get 200000 So yours would be like this. You would post a mini commercial in the middle of this episode. Make sure y'all buy my ebook on how to buy, buy the podcast in, the, in the, like, a little split. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? That's how you're going to market yours. Yours would be call to actions. Which means, you know what that is? Yeah, like you tell somebody to do something, they do it. Yeah, so you put it, link in my bio if you want to learn. So so on even on your viral content, post a paragraph, a meaningful, so you'll see me do this all the time because you don't want to seem sales pitchy. So I, I disguise it. Let's just say I got a viral moment here. I know that I could potentially get 50K to 100K views on here. So you got to think about the odds of that. You got to look at your odds on, you say, okay, I'm getting 20K views. How many of those people can I convert? Believe it or not, you're always guaranteed one sale of every time you do something. So if you post every day, you better know you're getting one sale. If you put link in my bio to buy this, someone is going to buy. Mm. Especially if it's cheap. If it's $20, $24, that's, if, you sell, if you sell a book for 20 shit going to sell like hotcakes no matter who you are. No matter what you're talking about, that's mm -hmm. a dub. People don't feel like they that they're losing that. Even your hater gonna buy that. I ain't even gonna lie to you. It was niggas who hated on me who bought that book because it was a dub. Mm -hmm. So he like win, lose, or draw, whether I hate him, like him or not. It's a dub. And that's how you really start them. I'm just learning, like, it's crazy because like I said, it's a breakthrough for me. I'm starting to learn, like, that's how you really make money. So like you have the money. You're shit not gonna you do make, to make but you, you gotta think twenty dollars is still slow. Mm. Even though I was making no less than a hundred dollars a day off my ebook, that's the least amount I'm gonna sell. About a five, I can't live off that. Right. But when you have I a can't. book, it's really what you're doing that's making you money, making more money. Cause it's I'm passive income. Yeah, yeah. You need. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this is another. Think about it, if I'm making a hundred dollars a day. That's three hundred sixty-five days in a year. That's thirty-six thousand dollars mm -hmm. that I'm making. You know what I'm saying? A year off ebooks, it's just a hundred dollars a day, five copies for twenty. And then let's just say you run 
So think about it. When you're running your ads, you got to say, how much am I trying to generate a day? So this is how you really run your ad. Let's just say you 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 start an ebook. I mean, you start, you write an ebook and you say, okay, I'm going to spend $20 a day on ads. So you're risking one ebook to potentially sell five. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to say, okay, I'm going to risk two ebooks. So I'm going to spend $40 a day. So that's how you really run your ads. You got to say, how much products am I with? So for me, let's say my course is $550. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to risk one course a day to potentially, you know what I'm saying, sell five. That's how I look at ads. Mm. Risking the product to make that. So when I ran my ebook, I was spending $40 a day. Risking two to tell to to make you know what I'm saying to get what six mm. ten it was really ten but I was risking two to sell ten a day mm. you get what I'm saying so that's how you gotta look at it at the end of the day you gotta put this money up to make money you gotta spend thank money. you that's what I'm trying to tell people I call myself Aristotle investment because I've always invested I don't just invest in ads I invest in myself I take trips trips are a mental investment mm. trips are a spiritual investment trips are regrouping everything is an investment you gotta look at everything as an investment from from your point even the girl you're with she's an investment mm. well, is she a long-term stock or is she a short-term stock you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. like everything you do has to be looked at as an investment and it'll change your life and shit, like you even said like um the food you eat investment no nah, facts even the clothes you wear like a lot of niggas you trying to throw in that designer shit if you want to do it. I mean, it might as well be an investment shit. You better be designer in the right only works. For one, to me, it won't work at all no more. It's a waste of money for me mm -hmm. because I'm I'm a deck of millionaire. I'm up ten m's, so it doesn't matter what I wear. It that you know what I'm saying. But like before, I would say this. It's good to make your audience see that you paid some mm -hmm. shit like that because people will only buy from you if they want to be like you. I'm telling you right now, bro, if I pull up in this Ferrari and there's a nigga who pull up in a Honda, who the hell are you listening to? Yeah, I'm definitely listening to the nigga in the Ferrari. You talk about that on uh, Finesse shit. Yeah, that's what For I'm sure. trying to say. So it's like, and, and I can be the first to tell you that's who I'm listening to. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm listening. I don't care what this Honda dude is saying. He can say whatever he's talking about. He can say, I'm doing this because I, I want to save my money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what this nigga talking about Facts. with the Ferrari? So how do you make that decision to win the stock, right? Because I got a homie who getting bread right now, right? But this nigga, he's, he's, what is it? Frugal as fuck. You know right. what I'm saying? But I, he probably could make more money if he, I don't know, bought some designer It ain't shit. for everybody. No, mm. no, he don't need designer. Mm. He don't need designer. Um... He needs a nice watch. So you can't be going G-Shop. Mm. That's just the name of the game. I know that's going to sound, can't do that. That's a no-no in the business world. Anything under a Rolex is a no-no. Mm. Nigga said under a Rolex. I'm under a Rolex. The, the motherfucking top ten. Anything <laughs> under a Rolex is a no-no. You will not be taken serious. And that might be the one thing I say go designer on mm. is your watch. Regards to anything, whether that Rolex is five thousand, seven k, the cheapest Rolex you can find. At least it's a Rolex. Mm. Don't pull up on no nigga with no tag hewer talking about some. Hey, what's up, dog? Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's by, that might be the one thing where I would say you gonna have to suck it up and go designer on mm. watches. And that's with like any type. If you am I right or wrong, court? All right. No, nah, I'm curious because like this. Why? Why would you say? That? <laughs> why, why would you say that? What? What is that? From your experience, what is niggas? How does that conversation they say it? Because they okay. say, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. How was that conversation? Let me tell you why. Me and you on vacation. We at the same resort. Mm -hmm. We looking to make connections. You don't know nut. You don't know me from a can of paint. I don't know you from a can of paint. How can I identify you that you are even worth me talking to you without seeing nothing, hearing your voice, nothing? Of course what I got on. And what if you don't got on nothing? Mm, that watch. Thank you. For sure. The the watch is, is how other, and, and that's also how white men connect too, believe it or not. Mm. Rolexes. 
or, or you go to the you go to a bar. Have you ever went to a bar with a Rolex on, and somebody approached you and talked about your Rolex? You have, I have, mm. you have. Nah, nigga, I haven't. It's gonna happen. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> Don't ask me no fucking questions. It's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> No, hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, but but that's it's the honest truth, bro. Okay, okay. So I'm giving you real game. So what about fake shit? How can somebody like? Cause you, cause I was just talking about this. Like I wouldn't be yeah, a fake you, a nigga. You gonna, you gonna go out sad though. Like I wouldn't be a spot a nigga with fake bro. Rolex. But if the game is really to, I don't know how to tell either. But I know because I bought my Rolex directly in the Lennox Mall Rolex store. Mm -hmm. I know mine's real. Mm -hmm. And this is before the pandemic hit. Before they went sold out. selling that shit no more. Like you can't, yeah, you can't, you can't even buy go in there that shit right now. <laughs> so I know my Rolex is real. Right. But but I'm saying for the average nigga, right? Because we talking about this is just for game, right? We're trying to, we trying to build connections and shit like that. Should he fake it till he make it is what you're asking me. See, if they expose him, then that's his reputation. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Some niggas probably do know how to. So, so it's like. A nigga that ain't never been on my name. Mm. Aristotle got the fake Rolex. Aristotle got fake diamonds. Aristotle hasn't made anybody money. As long as you keep it real across the board, you're going to be straight. My mom always told me, you remember the people forget the lie, but they remember the truth. Mm. So because I keep it real, I can just talk fluidly. Mm -hmm. But when you got to lie all the time, you got to be like, I keep making up lies and shit. I tell these <laughs> niggas this. I told them that. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then soon somebody going to one day, because people are like that. They're going to say, hold on, this didn't match. You know what I mean? I think, honestly, what you're saying is really like, because they say even as men, we only got two things in this world. That's our name and our word, right? Mm -hmm. And having a real Rolex just help your name stay clean. Honestly, you always want your name to be clean. That's you want it. no stain on your name. And that's Thank and, you. And, and having a real Rolex, it ain't about... Trying to flex on somebody is really just having your name remain. Because your clean. name gonna get stained. You don't when, when somebody do find out you got on that shit fake. Mm. That's so so I could I ain't gonna lie to a young dude and tell him the wrong thing. Right, right. I'll be telling him something wrong and saying go fake it till you make it. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like don't wear it. Look if that if the diamonds ain't real, don't flex it. If the gold ain't real, don't have on chains. Mm. Put just just don't wear nothing until you got it. Yo, don't don't wear the fake shit. I keep giving niggas game, right? You made a song, but like you were talking about, uh, uh, you was talking about um, how to run it up. Not that, not that, not that. I seen that one, but I think this might have been the older one. You were talking about how to budget. Yeah, that was it. How to oh, run that's it up. how to run it up. Yeah. Okay, what are the ways to budget again? What are we? What Five are we thirty to? twenty rule. Can you explain? Fifty that percent down? go to needs. Thirty going to the blessings. Last twenty go invested. What's what's blessings? So. Needs are so blessings would be like, like well, I the mean, let's go down, want. let's go down. Needs, blessings, go, go, let's go all the way down. Fuck it. So needs are like your bills. Mm -hmm. So if you make fifty k a year, twenty five percent of that gotta go to bills. And we only thinking yearly. We're not thinking like monthly. When, when you say this, yearly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So okay. if you budgeting even monthly, like fifty percent go to go to needs, thirty going to you having fun. If really? you want to, thirty percent going to having fun. I'm not mad at that. I'm just curious. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're going. You, you got to live life. And then 20% into investments. Yeah. That sounds way easier than like, that was it? That's just it? It's that, that, that simple? Yeah. Damn. Okay. But except I, I did mine's the opposite. 50% went to goddamn investing. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I told you that. Like 50% of my income went to living. The other 50% went to investing. So that's how I personally believe you're going to run it up the fastest. Mm. If you can 50-50 your investing and living expenses, you're going to run it up so fast. So Aristotle, right? 750. I come in 2500. Mm. If I'm consistent, mm. how, matter of fact you said it's only 250, 250 days uh to day trade, right? Mm. How many days in a month? Is it I mean how many days in a yeah, how many days in a month? 20. 20. All right, cool. Cuz not the weekends I'm assuming. Right. All right, bet. So Aristotle and holidays too. Okay. Bet I pay you seven fifty. I come in with twenty five hundred dollars. If I'm consistent for thirty days straight or twenty days straight, you gonna make some goddamn money. How much could I make? Shit. Especially if you watching. If you if you take the full course and you watch me live trade every day, and I'm going crazy because mm -hmm. you gotta think. I got ninety percent win rate. Mm. So that means like 
you're going to catch me a lot of days going crazy. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like that could be like a five. You could probably double that shit. So, it, but but like I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna just say let's just say two thousand. All right, two bands. Yeah. Okay, that could pay somebody rent, and you could make that the next month too if you put that yeah. up. If you be smart with. All right, so I usually what where, where, where be at um, Karen. All right, so I usually ask people. Uh, I use like me. I'm a person like I ask questions, right? right. I don't never leave nothing on the table. I ain't scared to ask for no favors, right? Mm-hmm. I usually ask my guests to uh, to do a um, a collab post, but I'm gonna be unselfish this time. And I ain't gonna ask nothing for me. If matter of fact, we, I see we, do could, a, we could do the collab. I appreciate that. How many like I be seeing you on all these big time interviews? Are you paying for these interviews as far as marketing, or they just invite you? In? They invite you. Once you get to a certain like, like certain standpoint, you just get invited to it. Okay. Shit. shit, I was hoping you say you, you paid for some for marketing or whatever, but fuck it. All right, I want to ask you a favor. Right. How could you? Because I I want to I want to bless somebody. Mm-hmm. If if you could give them a code or something or like have I don't know let's say I don't know like what's well, something that ain't gonna hurt you? I ain't gonna say five, maybe one or two people. If I can give it they, to your whole damn audience. I give them a discount code. Mm, but what about when I don't want to get nobody discount? Let's 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 bless somebody. It's, it's the is the we is the holiday season. Let's bless one person. What I don't know. Let's bless five. Five? Let's bless five people. But I mean, bless them like I don't know, like a what they want. Access to your program, the the be able to see you day trade the the whole that's the, the seven fifty package. Oh, that's gonna have to be one person. Let's bless one person. Let's I'm with it. it. God damn. I'm with. Yeah. I'm with it. That's why I want to ask. I'll let yeah, you do yeah, it. Yeah, Let's yeah. bless one person with the package for free. We can do that. So what would they have to do? Whatever you want them to do. Say, uh, see that that can be your call to action. You could say, hey, um, because you always want people to give you something that you could potentially monetize off. You getting something free. So you're going to get them something free. You're going to say, I want everybody to tag three people under this post. Mm. And then I'm going to pick somebody out of this. I'm such a sucker because I don't even, I don't want nothing, man. I just want somebody to win. But see, I that's want the one thing. person to win. That's the thing. Soon, people are going to suck and suck from you. Mm. And then you're never going to get yours. But see, the, the thing is, we're taught to be that way because we have survivor's guilt. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But... The white man is relentless. You okay. know what I'm saying? And let me explain that. He ain't, the white man ain't saying that, so why are you? Mm, he ain't waking up today shit. saying, shit, I don't need to make no more money, man. Let me just, I'm telling you, the motherfuckers relentless. Mm. Every single day. Yo, let curious, me go get it. Since we having this conversation, we're going to get a call to action to you, motherfuckers, because it's going to be one person that, that's a seven fifty, seven hundred fifty dollars $750. Is that the same with integrity, though? Because, for example, right, I did an interview with somebody. Mm. They didn't want to talk about We talked about some shit, and I could have definitely, like, sent it to, like, the shade room. Because it was crazy. It was some dope shit. It was some shit that I probably would have went viral with. And I'm like, nah, it seemed like they was uncomfortable. And I want to keep my integrity. I don't want to do that. But I was thinking, like, man, these big companies wouldn't give a fuck. They would have been sending that shit to everybody. Is that the same so it, Yeah, you got to start doing that, bro. Like, it's like, if you're in that business, you got to tell yourself, like, how can I capitalize off this? Like, see, see, it has to be about the money at some point. Mm, okay. You got to get to the money at some point. You got to say, how can I leverage and monetize my platform? Like, you should have entrepreneurs paying for ad slots. Mm. That's a, that's a, so now oh, yeah, after, I do that right now. I do that. see, you get what I'm saying? So now that's what, let's just say you charge 500 mm. for every ad slot. And you got three spaces on every episode. That's fifteen hundred an episode without you even have to worry about what YouTube pay you. No, for sure. You Trust got to me. figure out. We did. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got to figure out how can I monetize this platform the best I can. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And you can't. You got to be unapologetic about it first, mm. because worried about what a motherfucker gonna say is where you is where you go wrong. Mm. You worried about okay, somebody gonna say. I'm a man who wants, I don't, they, everybody wants everybody to play Robin Hood, but it's not because, it's because they want you stuck at the same level as them. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So they're going to put you in that mode. 
do it all for free. Be our Robin Hood. <laughs> be this, be that. And then and then next thing you know, you, you don't get paid. You broke. You ain't got nothing. And then now you worried about, God damn, Gilly and Wallow just got a hundred goddamn meal. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should go goddamn do that shit. You feel me? Like like it's gonna get to But I to feel a like point. they was like as far as the question I asked, I think it was great for podcasts. That was dope because they were one of like the real niggas that, that gave you the real niggas motivation because they ain't really do no sucker shit. They ain't sell out. They wasn't on here doing no goofy shit. And they, so it showed me, that's sort of answered my question. It was like about the integrity piece. You, We got living proof that you don't have to be out here doing goofy shit to, to make 100 million, million. That's why I asked about the integrity piece. Like where do you draw the line between business and integrity for real? I always stand for integrity, but at the end of the day, if you're comparing this shit to entertainers, they give zero fucks about integrity. And you know Facts. that. You yeah, know that Facts. half of this shit is publicity stunts. A lot of this shit, like 70%. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, 70%. I would say damn near 90% yeah, of this shit is goofy, publicity bro. stunts. Yeah, for sure. You get what I'm saying? For so, sure. Like with the blue face and the Christian rock, like pure publicity stunts, right? Yeah. So it's like once you realize that, you got to ask yourself, Cause even I deal with that too. I'm like, at to what certain extent? Mm-hmm. So you got to be comfortable knowing that certain shit you just you just not gonna do sucker shit. Mm-hmm. And I and I get that's what you're saying. Yeah. I don't want to compromise my integrity to get to the bag. I know I could clout chase, come on this motherfucker, and that's some people do that. Some people like, look, I want the bag. I'm gonna bring a whole bunch of motherfucking hoes on this podcast, and I'm, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it could be like that, but at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it all depends on what you want out of this shit. Nah, I feel like And how that. bad you want it. And then you, in the formula in which you're willing to attack it. All right, this is a great conversation, man. We're going to make, we're going to do this. Never had to do this shit before. So, I need y'all to post this shit on your story. Tag both of us. Aristotle, is it underscore investments? Yeah. Aristotle underscore investments. Mr. Underscore J Hill. And I'm going to pick one person to win this Aristotle class. How do I say this? The Aristotle class is worth $750. It was actually worth $550. Oh, it's worth $550. Oh, yeah, it's worth $550. Mm. It's worth $550. He's going to teach you the thing from scratch. He's going to teach you day trading from scratch. He's going to invite you to his Zoom while he's doing it live so you can make money, right? Yep. All I ask you to do is bring $2,500. $2,500 so you can at least make two bands in that month and be consistent. 20 days, bro. 20 days, man. I'm trying to make somebody some money. So all you got to do is repost any part of this, this interview on your story. Aristotle underscore investments. Mr. underscore J Hill. Tag us. I'm going to choose one person to win this class that Aristotle is providing that's worth $550. One person. That's all you got to do is simple. It's simple. I appreciate it, man. This is a great conversation. I, I learned a lot. I think my audience will be able to learn a lot. And then we can really provide some real, you know, get help for somebody. Somebody can win this and they can make some bread. You know what I'm saying? So Thanks. I appreciate you, my dog. Is there anything else that we didn't hit on that you that you promoting or anything? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really do too much promoting because, you know, I'm good on my end. So mm-hmm. I don't really. <laughs> but if I had to promote, I'll say uh, I got some some big things coming out. Um, I can't really speak on it. I'm the type of person who like to do it first. Mm-hmm. I don't really like to say, oh, this coming next because I'm so influential, bro, to the point where people know I get so much gain to where, like, they just, like, bro, I can literally say this is it and people going to start doing that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's to that point. Yo, with the day trade shit, do you think you got to, like, if you got a day job, you got to quit your job? Because it's from 9 to, 9 to 11 30. I tell people, take, the shift, um, take the shift after that. If you can take a shift from like 12, then you could trade. But if not, you're gonna have to swing trade, which is whole stocks overnight. But I don't wanna take too much time. I know we. You know, oh, I mean, shit, what's that? <laughs> That's some, like, you can make money from that shit? What, swing trading? Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of money in that shit. I mean, day trading is the most money. Swing trading is holding stocks overnight. Mm. So. You got to pretty much depend and hope and pray the news is on your side. It's damn near like rolling dice. Hmm. What about the regular stock shit? They say um, it's funny because I was watching the interviews, and the first thing I thought about was Adidas and Balenciaga. And I'm like, 
damn, do I invest into that now? Cause like I feel like that shit is down by a lot. I personally, um, I would never invest into a company. I mean, you're right though. Investing into Adidas after they lost Kanye, and if they go to the bottom, would probably be smart. Especially with the Balenciaga shit. I forgot what some shit, some crazy shit is going on. But the on. thing is, if the culture say that ain't it, then what? Like if black people collectively just say this shit ain't it. What a but I feel like 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 we did Fubu, like we did goddamn K Swiss. Did like we, we really did, do Fubu and K? Like I feel like that shit was damn never sure really. Damn did Fubu that like shit that. Was written, and we did Fila the same way, and we did Champs the same way at one mm, point. Okay, okay, okay. And we did True Religion like that. I feel like that shit just got old. They wasn't innovative with that shit for real. True, but if 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 we culturally say this is what we rocking. But let's Black be real. Are we are going so to do that though? Come be. Real. I'm saying. Let's, I'm trying to be real. You said about the money. Oh, nah, niggas ain't doing that. That's what I'm saying. So I'm niggas ain't that. coming together. But we do in a way, in a weird way, we do. Like we will say, we like this now, and everybody goes wear this. Mm. So, if everybody say we we on Yeezys, the, I'm telling you, black people are so powerful that whatever the fuck we rock with, the world rock with. No oh, fucks. Like like we say we wearing Yeezys, the world rocking Yeezys. If we say we ain't wearing that shit no more. The world not gonna wear it no more. That's we how powerful got on, we both got on the shit. That you, so that it's like, <laughs> yeah, like so it's like, but I'm wearing. I ain't buy. I ain't buying no more shits. Like it's just like it is what it is. I haven't bought a pair of shoes in maybe. Actually, I, I be I be buying shoes vacation, but they be cheap shits. Mm-hmm. Like I, ain't, I ain't really buying no designer shoes in a minute. So is is the is the how is the stock market? Right? Is it a good time to buy some shit? Like I guess, is it like they yeah. say buy one Tesla. Down. Tesla. Tesla is a good buy right now, but yeah, it's not the worst time to buy. No, give me top top ten buys right now. Apple, Google, Tesla. Um, AMD. The Kroger shit still or no? Kroger. Um. Dollar General still. Dollar General, uh, did you know Dollar General got more stores than Walmart? I, I mean, again, I, again, bro, you asking me because yeah, I did my research, like, so you can't it. ask me that. <laughs> like, that's why I brought it up. Damn, you, you <laughs> relentless with this shit. That's dope, though, bro. Like, like I'm teaching people so much shit that I be for. I don't even be realizing. You know what it be, bro? I really be thinking people don't be watching me. I post as if you're not watching. Mm. I mean, but I, yeah, nah, people, first of all, all the videos I watched had well like 50,000, 70,000. They had a lot of views. So, like, people are definitely watching. But I'm saying for me, it don't count because I asked the interview. So, I'm going to know what the fuck I'm talking to you about. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you said Do- Dollar General was, is the most because it's, it's more towns than cities, right? So, he's like, it's one Dollar General in, in every town. And you only start seeing, like, Walmart and shit. Believe it or not, bro, this is motivating to me because, like, like, but that's what I'm trying to ask you. I'm trying to get game for yeah, the niggas like, that no, watch I'm just, me. I'm just motivated because it's like niggas actually listening to this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas really real like, life That's listening. what I'm trying to get real game. Like, I'm trying to get something that could change a nigga life. You feel me? Like, some shit that change a nigga life. Like, damn, that's I, Like, you know, you know, I don't know, bro. Like, I don't like to believe this shit that powerful. Like, people will come up to me and be like, bro, you, you, you're powerful. And I'm like, this shit is social media. What the fuck you mean Man, I'm you powerful? you tripping. Oh, I was going to ask you that, right? Because I was going to ask you, would you choose f- fame or money? I feel like you were saying money for money, sure. Money, dog. Like, fuck that fame shit. But you, I feel like you've showed me that you can make so much money if you're famous, though. You can make a for lot of money sure. if you're famous. For sure. <laughs> like, okay, here's my perspective on this. Microsoft is a famous product. Apple is a famous product. EA is a famous company. Call of Duty is a famous product. Mm-hmm. So... You tell me a product that's not famous. So it's either your product famous or you famous. Mm, okay. You get what I'm saying? So you, now if your product famous, that's the best. Best case scenario. But social media made it to where you can make you famous and sell a product. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So I use that method. But hindsight, I'm still, I, I don't got no regrets. Because I always know that how powerful social media is. I could literally stop posting for a year and I'll be a nobody. So I could always pull back from this. 
Andre 3000 is damn near a nobody, but he's somebody. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? This is a man who's still a millionaire, who's somebody, but he said, fuck the world. And the world will forget about you and move on. So basically make a social media for a product. <laughs> but you got to think. You got to think. Who going to buy it if a face ain't associated to it? I mean, ads make it famous. You can if it's a great product. So if it's I mean, hardware. Like hardware meaning this will sell because this is something. Skincare, this brush will sell because it's something. Mm. But if I'm selling software, courses, I need to see somebody talking about this shit. Mm. Because I, I'm selling software, they need to see who's who's the face behind this. I need to see some type of human interaction. I get two fucks about these words. How you feel about dropshipping? Talk about products, just curious. I don't know if it works or not, but if you had to ask me my opinion and I had to give a general opinion about it, I would say overly saturated and you're possibly going to just pretty much be buying people's courses. You know what I'm saying? Like, oversaturated. Um, it's it's not worth it's not worth it for me. I wouldn't try to get rich off of it. Mm. Me personally. Okay. But could it could be a stream of income or I mean you wouldn't even work it's worth it. It's not if it works, it works. But I haven't seen a nigga turned off of it yet. Right. So because I don't and I know a lot of niggas who got money. I if I don't know one person with it, I can tell you it's a scam. All right, back. Give back to the uh, top ten uh, stocks. It was uh, Google, Tesla, um, Apple. Apple. You said what? A and AMD, Nvidia. AMD, Nvidia. Nvidia. Disney. Disney. Um. Shit. Let's see. I pretty much. Uh, I want to say Meta, but Mark Zuckerberg pissed me off with that last investment. Mm -hmm. Investing in Metaverse wasn't my favorite thing he did. It, they say it's burning a lot of his capital. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that his ad revenue went down because he has competitors with Google and TikTok ads now. They're eating up his shares because that's on him. He decided to uh, fuck up the algorithm thinking he had a monopoly. Mm -hmm. And thinking people would, that's, that's why he doesn't like TikTok because he knew that they were going to eventually cut into his ad revenue. If it wasn't for TikTok, Meta would be so fucking powerful, bro. So not Meta, what else? I'm making you work for this. They're gonna get, they, these niggas going to get this game today. The thing is, like, I would have to actually, I don't got my phone on me. Like, I'm having, like, I would have to. All right, seven you. is cool. Fuck it. All right. Top, top, since we have seven, top seven hustles that a nigga. We trying to get this capital, right? We trying to get this risk. We trying to get get this money, right? We trying to get this second twenty five hundred dollars. Second stream of income. Yeah, second stream of income can be top seven things that somebody can do right now. Right. No excuses, nigga. Broke, they can start it right now. Right. Top seven. What would you say? Barbering, trucking. Trucking? How? You got to get, um, get your CDL. Yeah, get your CDL. All right. Okay. You get your ass in the truck. Go drive. All right. So barbering. Or or uh. Yeah, barbering, um, shit, uh, lawn care. Okay, cut niggas' lawns. You got it's getting cold, but you can do it in the summer. Right. Um, I would say, uh, ooh, this is this is a good one. Uh, video editing. <sighs> video editing. That's a great one. Like, like I don't even know why niggas don't look That's over a this. Great Video, what? if you learn how to video edit, mm, mm, mm. all you got to do is literally hit up an entrepreneur and say, <laughs> I will edit your videos Facts for this set amount. I don't know why these dudes, these dudes do not want to lock in with one entrepreneur. Mm. What they rather do is fight for that, fight for that little, that little 3K a month when this entrepreneur can go get you four or 5K a month mm. for, for editing their videos. Okay. Editing the videos. What else? Uh, photography. 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 What else? That's a great one. Um, what else I would do if I was broke? I would definitely go on photography, video editing, barbering, lawn care, um, and then um, I wouldn't say YouTubing, but that would if you can do that, 
that would be dope. If you can find a niche on YouTube that you can post every day and get great engagement, mm -hmm. that would be a, a six content for sure. Creating. creating content. Yeah. I ain't mad at that. Um, sneakeries. That's that was for back in yeah. the, the time of that of just anybody hopping into that game. I would say I'll give you one. I guess maybe, and you can tell me what you think. Buy a um a press machine, make shirts. Press machine probably like seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars if that. Buy a little press machine. You tell the entrepreneurs, yo, I can make you some merch. I ain't gonna lie, selling t-shirts a go. Mm, yeah. I was gonna think about that too. All right, I got ten thousand dollars in my bank account right now. I just came up. What's the top five things to invest in? And how much should I invest? What should what what should I what should I not invest? You gotta start narrowing these numbers down. You'll say ten, five, seven. So top goddamn. five, that top. You gotta five. be like, bro, it's your top three, top two. You making it? <laughs> I'm nigga trying to make nigga. I'm trying to help niggas get this money. You feel know I me? Mean? Yeah, I say uh ten thousand. Ten bands. Do I put the whole ten in, or I just put the two bands in, like you said? I ain't gonna lie. If I got ten thousand, I'm probably gonna try to flip. I'm probably gonna try to make an extra five on some trading shit, but that's just me. Okay. But if I was somebody who didn't know nothing about trading, I'm probably gonna buy me some uh some t shirts and flip them real quick. T shirts? Probably starting me a clothing brand. Clothing brand. Probably picking up me some clippers. Let's <laughs> still go back to the I'm going, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm telling you what I'm gonna do. Okay. Okay. I can only tell you what I can do. It's like that's what I would do to to climb out the out, out the mud. Okay, cause you did you seen that it worked. Exactly. That makes sense. So if yeah. I got ten bands, I I put the two two thousand dollars into the uh, into the. I would I would go business first. I wouldn't go stock market. I gotta go get some cash flow. Mm. Remember, I keep telling you that it starts with the cash flow. Okay. So if you got ten bands, you're broke, because if you don't got, if, if you're not, if that ten bands came from you saving two bands a month, you're not broke. But if this ten band just came from a college refund, something where you did not work for, you are absolutely broke. Mm -hmm. If you got hundred, if you got a hundred bands for free, you're broke. Let me tell you why, because you don't know how to flip it. You like you lack financial literacy. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much money you got. You got fifty k laying around. You're a fuck. You're a few fuck ups away, a few emergencies away. You get what I'm saying, like. You never know what the fuck can happen. Like, like can hit you fast. All right. Listen, man, I'm going to let you go, bro. I, this is yeah. good. Hopefully niggas learn some. There's a lot of game in this motherfucker. Uh, this is one of my most informative uh, interviews. I don't really do the informative interviews. We be, like, talking like a bunch of, like, just, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> we be talking some deep shit. Niggas be crying and shit. But uh, I appreciate you, my dog, for real. Um, hopefully niggas learn from this. Aristotle Investments, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Make sure you tap in. All the way through. If you listen to this part, then you already tapped in all the way through, man. Make all sure these you niggas do it, cry these days. <laughs> you said all these niggas do is cry these days. God, bro. Because niggas tapped into that emotional side, nigga. You gotta get into how you feeling and shit. Like grown you gotta, man. we gotta goddamn prevail. Hey, you'd be surprised. That's why I think I feel a void because there's a lot of niggas like yourself who don't think that's important. You gotta be tapped nah, into it how come, you feel. It comes from uh, conditioning from our parents telling us not to cry. Yeah, but I understand that when you talk to a nigga like yourself and niggas understand it, like, damn, that's some real shit, bro. So don't be telling a nigga not to cry on this motherfucker. <laughs> he be crying. He probably be crying in a fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it be that nigga though. <laughs> he probably smoke. He think about some shit like, whatever. Aristotle, Mr. J Hill. Uh, <laughs> Aristotle underscore uh, investments, Mr. Underscore J Hill. It's a wrap. We out. Appreciate you, dog.